Let's take a minute just to exhale and let's go backward in time, shall we? Absolutely. Because there is a fantastic story that is playing out right now in our National Library System at the National Library Board that is something, for me and you, we're both history buffs, uh, mm. is so interesting to me. Some 27,000 historical materials are, are being donated to the National Library, including the Bintang Timor English language newspaper that was published in Singapore in 1858, a very rare uh, copy. It has finally come over, thanks to the generosity of donors Cynthia and John Coe, uh, to the NLB, in addition to many, many other things. We are so lucky right now to have with us uh, John Coe on the line to talk about that, a donor, and also Alicia Yeo, the Acting Director at the National Library Board. Good morning. Welcome to both of you to Saturday Mornings on Money FM. Good morning. Thank you. Thank Good you morning, guys. guys. Good Good morning. Well, morning. when I first heard about this, good morning, John. I, I said, we've got to get these guys on. Hmm. Maybe before we get John to tell us about the donation, Alicia, for the benefit of our listeners, give us a bit of historical context. Why? Tell us about the Bintang Timor newspaper and why it's such an unbelievable artifact for Singapore. Yes, indeed. This is a very scarce copy that we're very thankful that uh, John has uh, donated to us uh, here at the National Library of Singapore. Um, it was, from what we know, it is a, a very short-lived newspaper from around 1858 to 1859. Um, we don't know very much about the publisher, but we suspect they are American. Um, and it was a, a newspaper that was serving the, the, business, the, the business community back then uh, in, in that, that century. So yeah, we're very thankful that John has donated it to us. And we hope that um, as uh, more people come to know about this paper, come and research it, uh, new knowledge can be attained uh, about more about uh, our, our history from back then. Mm. Well, Alicia, firstly, I'm already... Uh, Alicia, firstly, I'm already very depressed that it's American. I thought it was going to be British. So that's going to make Glenn very happy for the rest of the day. Uh, John, how did you come by this newspaper? I mean, how did you get it? How long have you had it? It's mm. such a fascinating story, John. Um, <clears throat> I actually can't remember. I, I, I buy too many things. But, um, <laughs> I, you know, I, I go on to the internet. I go to fairs. I find things. People offer it. So somewhere in the process of the things I buy, because I buy lots of things on printed material, um, this showed up. And because obviously it didn't have the tag word Singapore, it didn't go, I suppose it didn't go to where the usual channel, go to the usual channels. But anyway, it showed up, so I, I bought it. And I, and having been at the libraries, you sort of know this, this kind of fits in with the collection. So it was an easy decision. And, and John, if you will, uh, we're talking to John Coe, who is a, a wonderful donor, along with his wife, Cynthia, of the 1858 Bintang Timor newspaper. Very rare. John, what, is, what's on, what are the stories on the newspaper? What's the front page look like? How big is it? How many pages? Kind of set the scene for us of what this rare piece actually looks like. I think it's four pages. Um, I don't usually read the things I buy. You kind of hmm. see it, you kind of know what it is, and then you've got to move on to something else. Otherwise, there's no time. <laughs> so I can't really tell you what the stories are, um, but it's you know it's it's a fairly straightforward factual report. Maybe I'll read it for the first time today. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> subscription rates. It tells you the rates of exchange at the banks. Um, it tells you at Lady Hills their obituaries, and this was for the 26th October. Um, so it reports news of our fellow men, and actually it's a reference to. The recorder, which is effectively the, the chief justice of the time, so obviously there was some case report. So not 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 too unlike newspapers today or news channels. And I guess what what news that matters haven't really changed that much. John, can you just give us the exact date of publication again? There, what was it again? Um, twenty sixth October, eighteen fifty eight. I mean, that's that's staggering. A piece of paper in Singapore, that's yeah. before Jack the Ripper. This is the time of yeah. Queen Victoria. This is, you know, only 40, 50 years after they buried Raffles. Before I mean, the Civil War in the U.S. Absolutely right, extraordinary. Yeah. Alicia, is it in good shape? Oh, yes, of course, because John is a wonderful collector who really mm. takes care of his materials. 
Yeah. How will it be displayed? Sure, Can people... things that are older yeah. than 1858. So. Yes, indeed. Actually, no. in the National Library's collection, we do have uh, older maps uh, as well. Um, lithographic prints of, uh, of of one of our other donors who donated recently in the past two years is from the Mr. Uh, Lee, Kip, uh, Lee collection. Um, mm. Yeah, it was a wonderful print of uh, something called the Jurong River. So yeah, you can look forward to it as we, but we need time to preserve and conserve it first uh, before uh, we digitize it and make it accessible online. Well, yeah, we, sh so, we yeah. should uh, emphasize, apart from the spectacular Bintang Timor English language newspaper, you're talking about over 27,000 historical materials that have been kindly donated to the National Li Library Board, which is wonderful, Alicia. Would you like to pick out one or two of the highlights? Yes, uh, among the over 160 donors, um, just to note that uh, the National Library collects uh, all sorts of things, uh, not just the early print publications and books, which is what you usually associate a library with, um, but we also collect uh, business papers, letters, handwritten uh, manuscripts, uh, typescripts, um, as well as more visual stuff like, like uh, maps, photographs, postcards, um, and also even audio-visual things like oral history interviews, sound recordings, music recordings. And they really span uh, uh, our history. So while we've been talking all the way back to, to the, the 18th century, we also collect uh, uh, stuff from the 1900s. So uh, some highlights for you. Um, recently, uh, the Singapore Textile Traders Association, one of our earliest uh, trade guilds uh, in Singapore, they donated to us uh, wonderfully, wonderfully preserved their account books, um, some of their membership directories, um, all handwritten. Um, and it does, it really points an interesting part of our history back then. Like from the 1912 account book, uh, it's even written uh, where they ask their members to sign off and say and take an oath that they will be fair in their business conduct. Otherwise, they will be met with misfortune and business failure, and everyone has to hand sign it. So I was really amazed reading just that page, although it's in Chinese, of course. Um, but yeah, materials like this um, and many, many much more is just open for the public, for researchers uh, to come and investigate and create new knowledge of our, of our heritage and history. Um, besides that, we also have exhibitions, publications. So I think through that process, more and more donors get to know of us and our preservation process, and they get excited and want to donate to us. Yeah, we're talking with Alicia Yeo, the acting director of the National Library, and John Ko, uh, a donor along with his wife, uh, Cynthia, of the Bintang Timor a newspaper from 1858, uh, among a cache of 27,000 items donated by 160 donors over the past two years. Uh, Alicia, as a practical matter, I, I've been to, uh, all of us have been to the National Library over the years, and, and one of the um, wonderful exhibits you had several years ago were uh, antique maps of Singapore. I think yeah. it was maybe five or seven years ago. It was a while ago now. Um, but when you look at this new cache of material, what, what is the likelihood that, you know, we average everyday people in Singapore will be able to see part or, or all of this material at some point? Um, uh, yeah, we, we can't bring out our collections all at once. <laughs> it really is right. uh, quite a fair bit. So what we do is try to curate around it. So we tell stories more about the maps and they tell really about Singapore, its place in the region and in the world. And this kind of echoes our collecting uh, our philosophy as well, you want to put it. Um, so yeah, slowly you will see us showing more and more of our collections as we curate it uh, and bring it out to the wider public. Even online as well. I mean, if you just join our National Library Facebook, they'll be able to mm. see videos that with, uh, with our librarians and archivists sharing about our collections, including those maps. Mm. Wonderful. Okay. Yeah. And John, if you could just, I know you did it just now, but if you could just hold up the newspaper again uh, while, while I ask you. I mean, maybe, John, it'd be interesting coming from you. You're such an avid collector. Firstly, tell us some of the things you've collected over the years and, and why are these collections so important to you? Um, well, actually, just, just a quick footnote. You asked me where I got this. Um, I now mm. sort of remember because years ago, I actually bought possibly, I can't remember the description, the first uh, newspaper, first English language newspaper published in Asia. And that was in Jaffna in Ceylon. So I think it was called the Star of, of Jaffna and it was basically published by the church. And that I, that's also with the National Library. Of course, it's, it's slightly off center in terms of collecting, but mm -hmm. as you know, as people will know, um, 
Tamils from Ceylon form a very big part of, of our community. And in fact, uh, the, the early civil service, judiciary, legal and medical professions, they were basically you know, professionals from, from Jaffna. So, so that's the background to it. Uh, why do I collect? Well, I collect books, and if you collect books, you end up collecting a lot of printed material, then you collect things on paper. Um, and then I, I guess I, I buy things that sort of have a connection to what I've done or connections to events. Um, and one of the items that later on we'll talk about, Max Havler, uh, it, it's, it's a book, and I was reading it once on a flight, and the Dutchman said, are you Dutch, or did you go to a Dutch university? Why are you reading Max Havler? So printed material has, has a wonderful way of, you know, giving some form and some tangible, you know, some, some physical quality to, to your own memories. So I, I tend to look at that. And then, of course, you know, they, they're actually very good evidence. So when someone says this, you know, these things did not happen, if you produce an object, um, it kind of solves the argument or solves the dispute quite quickly. Um, so so that's, that's why I collect things. But, but um, the, the, the fairly, there are very few boundaries, and I'm very glad the library took some of the items. I tried to persuade them to take more, but they claim that they have budgetary issues. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I could just jump in and add on that, uh, uh, John, I'm going to ask the question that every single listener is thinking right now. The word is behind me, Money FM. Yeah. Now, I know you may not want to be too specific, but you know where I'm going with this. What sort of price do you have to pay for some of these 150-year-old you know, documents? And you could be as specific or as vague as you like. Uh, probably between one to five thousand. Oh, really? Um, you can get that, and and the key to it yeah. is, is competition, um, mm. whether other people want it. So there's some wonderful things, but because it's so obscure, um, and you don't know about it, you have no competition. But the good news is, you know, just from collecting, Singapore-related items are now pretty expensive, and that just simply tells you there are more people interested in it. So mm. actually, in a way, it's quite good to collect around the region say Burma, Ceylon, Thailand is very well collected, possibly Vietnam, um, certainly bits of, in, so certainly in Indonesia. So, so, you know, since it's money FM, value, you know, you, you can find value in, in collecting around the, the region. So Singapore is just because, you know, we're a wealthy country, there are people, lots of it, people interested in it, you can. But, but I suppose as an aside, you can probably collect Penang, well, you, I'm hmm. pretty sure you can collect Penang much more cheaply than you can collect Singapore. Hmm. Um, interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. We're talking with Alice Yeo, Acting Director of the National Library Board, and John Coe, uh, a collector and donor, and so many uh, different uh, people and families uh, uh, donated to this cache of, of nearly 30,000 objects, Alice. And one of them was some cartoons, I believe, and some things that, are, that were around, like, very much popular culture uh, of the day. What do we learn when we see some of these you know, very sort of uh, down-home representations of what life was like in Singapore, not just the maps and the newspapers and things, but, some, yeah, some of the, uh, I think, what John's yes. holding up now. What do we learn from those? Oh, definitely reflection of our reading culture from back then. So the what John is holding up now is a, a snippet of the Chinese comics that he donated to us as well. Um, these are actually were published from Hong Kong, but were, were very well used by Singaporeans and around the region as well. Yeah, back then. So yeah, it really does tell uh, what our reading culture was like and our entertainment and, you know, like now, uh, we, we do need to find ways to relax, especially with the pandemic. So yeah, this is a reflection of, of yeah, back then, how uh, people uh, entertain themselves. Yeah, that's a lovely cover, John. Thank you. And can I just ask, John, um, wh what, how old are those comics? Oh, these are not too old. These are probably about 70 years old. Right. Uh, they were pub uh, printed after the war. And the Chinese comics, and, and actually the interesting thing is that these are mostly printed in Hong Kong, and they were then distributed all over Southeast Asia. On one of these prints, a small print, it identifies all the different bookshops all around Southeast Asia, even like Medan, uh, Surabaya, Malacca, and so on. So, so it, it was how people entertain themselves, and, and the common footprint oversees Chinese, Chinese language, and Chinese comics. 
Fabulous. And I've just got to add, we've got a question from Stanley, or mm. a comment really. Just look at John's background. Is that his library, his study room, his back room, his main hall, or his toilet? Clearly you have an extensive collection, John. <laughs> so could you answer that question? And then my question, will you continue to collect? I, I collect every day, so so that's no... <laughs> I have an extremely... Un, I mean, Cynthia's extremely understanding. Um, so I have um, here in Singapore... <laughs> two levels of probably the most expensive storage in Singapore because I live off Orchard Road, um, mm. about, I guess, a thousand <laughs> square feet. Um, they're wow. compactors downstairs, which are for the rolling stacks to put stuff in. Mm. Um, um, yeah, and, so, and, and there's no space for a toilet. So it's just all, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Some naps well, and, and photographs. You, you've got bigger things to do than think about, uh, you know, yourself, right, when you're, when you're taking care of your collection. And I'm sure Alicia will gladly take whatever you have no space for at some point. Am I right, Alicia? Yes. Singapore, Southeast Asia. Thank you, Alicia. Oh, yes, we will collect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great to see you both. Alicia Yo, Acting Director of the National Library Board, thank you so much. And John Coe, a collector and philanthropist donator. And to all of the other 160 uh, people and families who donated this most recent cache of 27,000 items to the National Library. Thank you as well. Thanks to you both for coming on. Please come again uh, when you have something else to show us. We'd love to hear it. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Alicia. Right. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Have a great day.